I think it's tough. It's that vicious cycle. It's like we, we need to be confident, but we don't know how to be confident. And then where do we go? So if somebody's sitting here listening to this going, there's kind of two subsets. The first subset is the old us, the 20, 30-year-old us that's sitting here going, Oh, yeah, no, everyone would say I'm confident as heck, and I'm sitting here going, what the heck am I doing? And it wasn't like we weren't skilled or weren't performing well. It just, for me, it just, I was performing well, doing well, um, advancing well. It just wasn't authentically me. It was kind of that, like you said, I was a lot more, I had tipped a lot more masculine. I was way more, you know, all things work, drive, 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 you know, the the hustle, 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 which, um, you know, I'm, I used to subscribe to the hustle culture. I don't like it right now. I think we need way more fun and way more excitement and way more balance. But how do, for 20, 30 year old us, where do they start with this? Okay, so for the 20 or 30 year old us, or really anybody, I, I think it's just um, the opportunity to really get to know yourself. Because my definition of confidence is when you know who you are, own who you're not, and choose to embrace all of it. So that first part, knowing who you are, there's a a measure of self-awareness along with it. And um, I don't don't wanna speak for all 20 or 30 year olds, but I I would imagine most of us in our 40s or 50s would tell you one of the greatest parts about aging is you get to know yourself more. You feel more comfortable in your own skin. You, you, You care less about all the other noise and the things and the people. I would invite those of you who might be tuning in who are younger to start that journey a little bit earlier. Discover yourself. Think about the things you know to be true about you at this point in your life. What are your superpowers? What are your strengths? What are your unique talents and abilities? And really become intimately acquainted with yourself. Part of that is, you know, this sort of self-love movement. And, And I don't know about you, but sometimes from the outside looking in, that seems a little cheesy, but what I'm really talking about here is knowing, accepting, embracing yourself. We should first and foremost be somebody that we love. And and side note on that, I I spent a lot of my 20s trying to find the person who would love me because I thought once I found that person that, you know, confidence and feeling good and happiness and joy and all that would come along with it. And, and those things do come along with being in a loving and healthy, healthy relationship. But the start of being in a loving and healthy relationship is to love and care for yourself first. Um, and it eliminates some of the <laughs> getting into some of the ugly, bad relationships um, that can really chip away at your confidence um, if you let it. So that, that's my fast answer for that. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And I think with, with everything, what's interesting is we weren't taught that. And, you know, it's, tw- I wish we could go back and, and I have, I have a 20 year old, you know, chi- I can't say child, but you know, my, my oldest is in her mid twenties and it, and she's got an insane amount of confidence, but it's, it's confidence because you're confident, not because you know what's going on around you. And they, you know, there's there's not a left life experience. And that's so hard to help somebody in their 20s understand. It's like, there's so many things you haven't been through. There's so many scenarios. There's so, And it's not that we're smarter because we're not. We're just wiser because we've lived through it. We've made the mistakes. And I think for so many people, confidence changes over the years. You made an excellent point about loving yourself first and the relationships. I kind of joke with my daughters, I don't want them to get married until their mid thirties. Um, I don't think they're gonna listen to me, but it's because I, and the reason I always say that with people is because that is the age where I feel like people start, or at least historically, people have started to come into their own and understand who they are and start to embrace that more. And you said it, I mean, you're spot on. If you could, my wish for people that are younger is that you could start to love yourself and understand and know yourself sooner and not rely on the external. Cause I was like you, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was external validation, whatever you, which is why you 20 year olds are doing crazy wackadoodle things. You're out there trying to, <laughs> you're seeking the validation externally, right? You're not looking yeah. at in, internally to say, does this feel good to me? Does this feel right to me? And as you get older and you start to go, okay, this makes some sense now. Maybe I was doing it wrong all these years. And you give you yeah. give less, less Fs. Uh, le- far less Fs are given when you're older, right? 
just because a hundred percent doesn't matter what other people are thinking. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's just um, like how do I say this? It's uh validation feels good i always say it's icing on the confidence cake it's not the cake itself but what you're saying is actually um backed up by research as it relates to confidence young girls and young boys have about the same level of confidence until around age eight somewhere between seven and nine um and then we start seeing a separation the working years 20s and 30s is where it's the furthest apart between, you know, women and, and men. And I, of course, I don't speak for all women and all men, but generally speaking, when we enter the workforce, we're entering at, as women with less confidence than our male counterparts. We don't see it come back together until our 40s. And then in our 50s and 60s, women actually have more confidence than their male counterparts. I, I think a little of that be, is because um, part of the way, you know, the the con on the men's side is that their value is in their productivity, in their work, in their success when they hit their 50s and 60s. And that isn't what defines them so much yeah. anymore. Um, they see a lowering of confidence. So and it's, it's women, we've really lived we've lived through childbirth, child rearing and menopause. So by then we're like, bring it on. Yeah. Right. There's not a whole lot exactly. left you could throw <laughs> exactly. at them. But you're right. And you even the heart. Right. Exactly. Well, and the confidence, like you mentioned, the 20s, there's, you know, there's tons of research that say men, you know, there's this whole gender wage thing and all the, the, the wage gap and all that, which is a big thing to talk about. But one of the far less discussed items with the, the wage gap is that women don't advocate for themselves because they aren't thinking they're worth it. They walk in and they, you know, a starting salary where a females go, yeah, that's great. I'll take it. And a male says, no, I want, I want higher. You know, so the women, part of confidence is advocating for yourself. And I think we've done ourselves a disservice. And that does play into a lot of the challenges we're seeing in the world. Not not fully the reason, but certainly play into it a lot with the jobs we go after and the paychecks. 